Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and today's video is going to be a little bit different. So, uh, the last Game Maker video that I made, I uh, spent a lot of time complaining about Game Maker's asynchronous save load features, and how, like, user unfriendly they are. And I mentioned at the end of that video that, like, some enterprising members of the community have gone and created their own wrapper libraries around the asynchronous uh, buffer save and load features to make them a little bit more user friendly. And uh, I was lying awake at 3 in the morning last night, as one does, and I thought, you know what might be fun is actually, like, doing that myself. So, I have not done this before. I don't have, like, a lesson plan project on, on the side, uh, which I'm going to be referencing. So, you're going to get to see a little bit of, like, live problem solving, as it were. If you haven't seen the last video on the asynchronous game maker save load buffer functions, I would recommend going and doing that. Uh, so that you know what the problem is and what we're trying to fix. Uh, if you already have a solution to this, which I imagine a number of you do, then great, because nobody should have to be cursed with dealing with game makers' asynchronous buffer save load functions. So let's get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and uh, create a little script, and I'm going to call this buffer async fixed. And uh, what we're going to write is I'm going to write a few more user-friendly versions of the functions buffer save async and buffer load async. So these, as a quick reminder, are functions which will take like a buffer ID, a file name, an offset, and a size, and like either save the data from the buffer into a file or load the data from the file into the buffer, depending on which. Um, I'll let you guess which one does which. Uh, then you have to go and like go off into the async save load event in a game maker object and do all this stupid nonsense. And um, that's not a lot of fun. It would be really nice if you could. just uh, take like the buffer, the file name, the offset, the size, and a callback function, and you could just like save a callback function to be executed um, whenever the, uh, the appropriate operation is completed. And uh, that is what we're going to be implementing today. So uh, let's say buffer save async. Uh, I could call this like buffer save async fixed or buffer save async callback or something like that, but because I, uh, I see no reason to not make a mockery of uh, spelling as well as everything else. Uh, I'm gonna call it buffer save async, and uh, that is going to be for uh, for saving uh, buffer load async is going to take uh, not a buffer a file name an offset and a size, but it's just going to take a file name, an offset and a size, and the callback function, and um, instead of having to like create an empty buffer and then send it into the function and then. Uh, hope that you, like, aren't trying to recycle the buffer from somewhere else because I think someone else pointed out in the comments that uh, the code that I had written technically would have a memory leak if you, like, spam this function a bunch of times in a row. Um, we're just going to generate the... Uh, we're going to create the uh, buffer that we're going to load from um, inside this function itself so that the user doesn't have to do it. Uh, the last thing we're going to want to do is I'm going to define a third function, and this is going to be buffer... Uh, I'm going to call it buffer async deal with all of it. And this is going to be a function which just lives in the async save load event and handles everything for you. Um, I'm going to pass this two parameters. One is going to be, well, we're going to have the uh, the async load ID and the async load status. And we're just going to pass those, um, those DS map keys as parameters into this function. So let's call that async ID and uh, status, and we can figure out what to do with those in a little while. Uh, I'm going to go over to source control, and I'm going to commit these changes. Uh, like a good little software engineer, and now we can actually get into things. So uh, the original buffer save async function, which I'm going to deal with first because it's a little bit easier. Uh, this function is going to take the buffer ID, the file name, the offset, and the size, which are the uh, conveniently enough the first four arguments into the wrapper function. The only change that we made here is the callback. Um, this is going to return a a buffer save ID, uh, which we can use inside the async save load uh, function to like figure out what buffer we saved and or attempted to save. And uh, we're going to need a way to keep track of this. So I'm going to do what is uh, going to be a little bit controversial, no doubt, and say global dot buffer async stuff. And we can just initialize that to an empty struct. So this is going to create a key value pair 
data structure that we can use to like map the save ID to the callback functions and stuff like that. And inside the uh, after we get the the save ID here, we can say uh, buffer buffer async save stuff. The global 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 variable is going to be uh, let's just give it the string representation of the save ID. And this is going to be a uh, I'm going to um, put a little uh, struct in here, which is going to contain contain a little bit of data. One is going to be the callback, uh, which we want to execute when this operation finishes uh, successfully or otherwise. And the other is going to be, I'm just going to say type is going to be save. Uh, in string, you could make that like a some other data type if you don't like hard coding strings. And that is going to allow the buffer async deal, deal with all of it function to like look up the ID of the, uh, the async callback that it received and like do something useful with it. All right. So uh, how about committing this change? Like that. So buffer load async is going to be a little more complicated. So uh, as I said, this function is going to take a, a buffer that you want to load the data into. And we are not supplying that um, to the function because that's annoying. Uh, so we're going to need to go and create one ourselves. Uh, we can say. I'm going to call it destination buffer is buffer create. Uh, let's initialize its size to one. It's type to buffer grow. I don't actually know if you make a buffer fixed, um, if game maker will resize it as needed. I imagine it will, but I don't feel like finding out right now. And we can, uh, we can feed this into the destination, this destination buffer into the buffer load async function. Uh, we can Uh, give it the rest of the arguments which are supplied to this function. We can capture that load ID from the return value. And we can uh, also put some of that data into the buffer async stuff uh, map over here with, uh, again, the callback. Uh, the type can be load. And we're also going to need now the destination buffer. Uh, because we're going to need to, like, if the file loads successfully, you're probably going to want to be able to, like, actually access the where you put all the data into in the first place. And uh, while I'm thinking about it, I guess uh, we can also save the buffer to the buffer async stuff uh, struct when you save a file too. It's less important when you do it like this, but... Uh, I guess it uh, it feels right to have that symmetry there, you know. Also, for those who don't know, um, when it comes to like creating anonymous structs like this, uh, in Game Maker you are allowed to just say the variable name if you're trying to create a um, a value inside the struct which has the same name as a local like this. Uh, I generally don't do that on video because it's confusing for people who don't know what's going on. All right, so I think we can say that we've implemented the buffer load async function like that. And uh, what do we need to do next? So next, we should probably actually uh, fill out this buffer async deal with all of it function. Uh, this is going to be called, as I said, inside the game makers, uh, asynchronous save load event. And it's going to take two arguments. One is going to be the async load ID like this, and the other is going to be the async load status like this. And uh, once this is working, we can just get, like get rid of all of this, right? And then we can just execute the relevant code inside the callback function instead of having all of this in the same event, uh, which is just weird and dumb. Um, so the first thing we're going to want to do is inside the buffer async deal with all of it function, we're going to need to actually like look up uh, the async ID that we saved or loaded. And I uh, guess the uh, a good place to start would be checking if the uh, if the variable name exists inside the buffer async stuff. Um, map over here because uh, it's possible that like, uh, do I have the correct number of, there we go. So if the only async save and load that you were doing in your game was being called from one of these two functions, then the uh, the key would be guaranteed to exist inside this, um, inside the struct over here. But if anything else in your game happens to call a buffer async save load uh, function from somewhere else like 
the regular game maker way, then it's possible that you might end up with an, trying to process an async ID that doesn't exist and then like bad stuff will happen. So we're just going to do that little safety check first. Let's save our async info is going to be um, the, uh, the value that goes with the key in the struct, should it exist. And that's just going to be um, like one of these two structs. It's going to be the callback, the type, and the, uh, the buffer. Missing a semicolon there. And we can say if uh, async info dot type equals equals save. Um, actually, you know what? I don't think we actually even need the type because they're both going to take the callbacks for both functions. Okay, I should have said this at the beginning, but like we're going to we're going to call these functions, and it's going to look like something like whatever, whatever, whatever. And then the function callback is going to take the um, buffer and the uh, the status like this. Um, I forget if this is exactly how something like uh, Node.js is asynchronous um, file functions would, would work, or if it's just like very similar. I'm just making this up as we go. And this, um, this callback is going to take the same arguments for both saving and loading. So I don't think we actually are going to need the type. Anyway, uh, we can say async info dot callback and uh, as I said, this is going to take two uh, two arguments. One is going to be async info dot buffer. The other is going to be the status, which came in from the uh, you know the async load map over here. And uh, I think that's actually all we're really going to need. So is that it? Have I done everything? I'm uh, I'm calling this function in the async event. Uh, I think we can comment out all of this like this. And I think we can, uh, I think we can be on our way. Let's see, where do we actually use this? So in the, uh, in the player step event, ooh, you know what? The, uh, the fact that you can use buffer async groups is going to complicate this a bit. Okay, you know what? We can do that for extra credit later. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the buffer async groups uh, for the time being. Um, I don't know if I'll implement that myself uh, in this video or if I'll like make a supplemental video later or if I'm just gonna say have have a challenge to like do it yourself. Um, all right, didn't think of that. That's gonna be a problem that's gonna have to be solved one way or the other. Uh, I'm going to replace buffer save async with buffer save async. Uh, we're going to supply a callback function. And like I said, this is gonna take two arguments. Uh, one is going to be the buffer and the other is going to be the status. Uh, I am not going to delete the buffer immediately after calling the buffer save async function. And I'm going to um, instead buffer delete the buffer inside the callback. And that way, like, for the purpose of this function, I want the buffer to continue existing after it's been called. And then, like, if the, pl if the user wants to delete it themselves like this, they can do so. If the user wants to, like, if the user wants the buffer to keep existing for whatever reason, they're free to do that as well. As far as the status goes, we can say if uh, status, uh, so if that's true, uh, you know, maybe I should call this success instead. Um, what did I copy and paste there? I'm gonna call this success, and then we're, we can print out show debug message like this. And then if success is false, then we can like, what did I do before, mock the player for having a full disk or something? like that. And that's going to be our buffer save async function. And that's that's going to be how we use it. So buffer load async uh, is going to be similar. Our callback is going to be a function which is going to take the buffer and uh, a success code like this. And we're going to have to do a little bit more, uh, a little bit more work uh, when we actually load the player data. Um, I am not going to want to supply the load buffer argument there because we're going to handle that like inside inside the callback or inside the, you know, wrapper function, which is going to be passed to the callback. Uh, what actually were we doing when we uh, when we loaded the game? So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to copy it from the async save load event and I'm just going to stick it inside inside this callback. We can replace the async load map 
uh, value with just like the status code. Uh, so if we can say success is false, then we're gonna uh, panic like this. Uh, otherwise, uh, our load buffer is uh, is now just gonna be that function argument. Uh, we can read the JSON from it, we can parse the, date, the JSON from it, we can delete the buffer, and then we can say uh, with the player, we're just going to um, set the position and facing direction, and uh, we can, uh, I guess we'll also print out a status when we're done, because everything else, all other like four possibilities here, uh, print out a status uh, when it finishes, and I see no reason why this should be any different. Um, also, it's instead of early out, doing an early out, if you, if you fail to load, if you, uh, just for the sake of making this look like the, uh, the other functions. All right, so that is our asynchronous uh, save load wrapper. And that should, I think, uh, do the job that we want it to. Uh, again, there's the, uh, the slight problem of the, um, where was it, the, uh, the async groups, but that can be a story for another day. Let me go and stand over here. We can hit the P key. We can see we successfully saved the game. We can run off uh, to, to the middle of the room. We can hit the O key. Oh no, failed to load. What happened? Okay, uh, this is going to require some debugging. Oh, uh, the file name was, uh, the, the, it was looking for a file name which didn't exist because I was messing with the, the group stuff. All right. Um, let's try that again. Hit the O key and now we're going to load. Uh, the uh, the file is still there from um, from the last time, which is like one of the one of the nice parts about making videos on saving and loading is that if you like if you successfully save the game but you mess up uh, loading the game, you don't have to redo the part of the the test that's like saving the game because the file is still going to be there anyway. So that is it for buffer async save and load, uh, fixing it somewhat. I uh, don't believe there's anything I want to do anything else I want to do right now. Uh, besides maybe commit our changes like this. And we can um, we can call it a day. All right, that was fun. Uh, I guess, you know what, let's also get rid of all this synchronous saving and loading stuff because it's just, it's extra code that, that's distracting and I don't want it there. Uh, let's uh, undo that commit and then redo it with that um, that code gone. All right, that was fun. Uh, that took about 25 minutes of real time. Hopefully the video will be uh, shortened to maybe a little bit less than 20 once I um, once I clean it up a little. Uh, if you don't use async uh, async save load groups, then like you are perfectly free to take this code and then use it as it is. Um, if you do make use of async save load groups, I'm not going to deal with async save load groups now because um, I got to go do something else after this. But uh, if you want to handle that on your own, uh, I would recommend basically instead of like keeping track of a single buffer in this little blob of data here, I would recommend keeping track of an array of buffers and passing the array of buffers to the uh, to the callback function. And then like if you want to save and load more than one file at once, uh, you can um, you can get them all in one shot. But I think I'm going to end this off here. So, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. If you want the code for this, look for this GitHub repository down in the description of the video. I might, like, I don't know. I might dress it up a little bit, make it a little nicer, um, add some more safety checks, make it deal with uh, async save, save load groups, and then, like, publish it as, like, a um, like a proper asset or something like that. I don't know if I'll go to all that effort right now because GMRT is on the horizon and it should allegedly fix most of these problems. But uh, we'll see. I'll probably make use of this in Wizard Ducks at some point because right now the uh, if I can find it, the uh, asynchronous buffer save load code for uh, for that game is kind of a mess because there's kind of a lot of files that need to be loaded at various points for like save data and and, and other things. Speaking of Wizard Ducks, uh, you should all go check out the Steam page for it. Link to that can be found down below. Uh, I have a Patreon, so if, if you want to contribute to the channel. I'm sure you can figure out where to find that too. I hope you all found that useful and I will see you all later. Special thanks to DJ Gibbles, Edward Hulk, Game Maker, Ganymede Ghost, Manta Ray, Spy Die Games, Square Crow, Vitro V, and Zengiment for supporting these videos. If you feel inclined to support the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.